Hello, everybody. Welcome again. This is our penultimate Scribo seminar. We're going to have a grand finale in two weeks' time. But in the meantime, let me introduce our guest for today with a very enticing topic because in our Scribo series this year, we've covered hieroglyphs from all over the world the Maya, those from Crete, those from Egypt. But Anatolia so far has been eluding us. But we made sure to catch up with it. And today, here we are with Rostis Lavoreshko and the origins of hieroglyphic writing in Anatolia. Welcome, everybody. Rostislav received his PhD in the history and languages of the ancient Near East department from the Freie Universität Berlin in 2012. And he is currently a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Leiden. His research focuses on the Anatolian languages with a specific focus on Luvian and the Western zone languages, Lydian, Carian, and Lycian. He's also interested in the historical, cultural, and of course, linguistic interactions between Anatolia and the Greek world. He's also interested in Greek oral poetry and Homer specifically, but also the Balkan migration to Anatolia. And last but not least, very, very enticing, the Phrygian language. More on that very soon, I hope. Rosislav was a Marie Curie grant grantee in Poland at the National Science Center with the project, the Trojan Catalog and the peoples of Western Anatolia in the late Bronze and early Iron Age. And that uh, Marie Curie scholarship uh, focused on the analysis of Homa in the light of Hittite sources and the classical geographical tradition. Some of Rostislav's uh, articles have sparked a very lively, very interesting debate among Anatolian specialists. And needless to say, we do love that. Today, he will delve, delve deep into the origins of the Anatolian hieroglyphs from the second millennium BC. And I am, for one, very much looking forward to this. So, Rostislav, before I hand you the floor, let me announce that in two weeks' time, on the 7th of July, our final Scribo seminar for this year will feature the Inscribe team and our analysis of the Cretan Linear A fractions. More on that soon on our social media. Rostislav, over to you. Lovely to see you. Great to have you here with us. And thank you, everybody, for joining us and for being so assiduous and so lively in our Scribble Seminars. Thank you. Rostislav. Hello to everybody. And uh, thanks a lot, Sylvia, for introducing me. And of course, thanks a lot for, uh, for inviting me to do this, which brought me so to rethink and, uh, well, to re refurbish uh, many of the ideas I, I was thinking of. Okay, so I will be so basically uh, talking about um, so like well presenting some observations to be to be exact. Uh, so on the origin and early stages of development of the hieroglyphic writing of Anatolia. Uh, but uh, I will start so with uh, briefly presenting so the uh, what uh, what hieroglyphic writing of Anatolia looks like in general. Both because I think that not everybody from the audience uh, deals with. Uh, this uh, specific writing on everyday basis and uh, because uh, the, um, the the structural uh, the uh, considerations on the structure uh, will play, uh, play a role in my later argumentation okay very briefly a map uh, so that you uh, you know so in which part of anatolia so uh, are we actually well it's not uh, by far not all anatolia it's uh, basically it's south uh, southeastern corner so the uh, what uh, what what is usually uh, called in later tradition uh, Cappadocia. um so in black are the uh, later corpus the uh, basically early iron age and in uh, red you can see a somewhat broader area of distribution of the inscriptions in the late bronze age i would like so to to pick up uh, so just a randomly chosen uh, example from one of the uh, late inscriptions to show so what type of uh, um, signs, uh, what type of meanings uh, so uh, you can find in them and how the uh, script functions in general. 
uh, well, this is the uh, one of the inscription from from Karkamish, uh, so which is basically in Syria, and um, the uh, well the uh, the scribal tradition of Karkamish was probably one of the most uh, developed uh, one, and uh, so one can uh, indeed speak about uh, scriptoria of Karkamish and uh, uh, Karkamishian scribal tradition. And uh, so uh, you can um, basically see how, well, if you, if you are doing so with uh, writing systems in general, so you can even uh, without, without looking on the um, on the uh, so this part of the description uh, only on the uh, transliteration you can uh, already guess uh, or even uh, learn many things uh, so how it functions so you can see basically so the quite quite a lot of uh, phonetic things but not everything is phonetic so you you've got uh, something which is uh, rendered strangely enough by latin names of course, this is the uh, conventional uh, practice uh, of, um, so, so to say, encoding uh, of what, what one usually calls ideograms or logograms. Uh, so the, for the convention, I uh, marked the uh, logograms and ideograms uh, in blue and the so-called uh, determinatives in, um, in red. So if you compare the um, the transliteration and the uh, phonetic rendering of the text, which I um, which I have given um, below, you can see that almost everything um, can be read. Yes, yeah? so there are some um, unclear positions. So there are some uh, some problems, but basically, uh, so this is the uh, almost phonetically written text. And uh, so now the uh, what type of uh, signs you uh, you find so if you look at the um, the um, inscription itself uh, you will uh, you will not see uh, much uh, difference uh, but so the the function of the science is quite different so the first so in generally uh, one can define an Italian or Luvian hieroglyphic uh, system probably I will return to this um, the problem of uh, of appellation an Italian or Luvian a little bit later uh, this is basically a logo syllabic writing system. So, so to put it uh, sharply, so the uh, logograms and uh, ideograms constitute a very important part of the uh, of the writing system. And basically, it's the I would not uh, distinct them too much. So this is a sign rendering a meaning and block uh, that is without specifying its exact phonetic shape. Distinction between a logogram and an ideogram and a determinative is rather conventional. Classification as a logogram and an ideogram will depend on the semantic volume of valence associated with a given sign. This is not a stable thing, but can fluctuate uh, according to scribal practice or basically individual use uh, or uh, even uh, fantasy of an individual scribe. So to, uh, so to give you the better idea of the principle, so the uh, sign uh, radio, um, this is what one um, can without any hesitation call a logogram because basically um, behind this sign stands as far as we can see only one single word, which is probably Nini, um, but I will not um, linger on this point. So it uh, could be a, a different word, but in any case, so we do not have any, um, any evidence for for the reading of this particular sign uh, in a different way. And the same applies uh, for a number of other examples as uh, the sign for king, the sign for queen, uh, for army or for year. It is quite uh, possible and uh, so you can, uh, so if you think about that, so basically it is not uh, uh, not an iron fixed rule. Yeah? So you, you can imagine that the same, uh, uh, behind the same sign, uh, the behind the same uh, semogram, so to say, uh, you can uh, find uh, all of a sudden a different uh, thing. So connected semantically, so with the, with the basic idea of a country. So there are some other uh, comparable uh, things. For example, a sign for stealing. So it's uh, indeed uh, in the majority of cases, uh, so mm, practically 95% of the corpus, we have we find uh, so with the, uh, so with this uh, ideogram or logogram with this sign uh, only one lexeme, which is uh, sounds in hieroglyphic Luvian as one. 
but then so in one uh, inscription or it's the, the uh, like two parts of uh, one single inscription uh, all of a sudden we find a different bird uh, which is tanis will uh, which is apparently a, a different sort of steely uh, comparable uh, cases uh, exist also in uh, so with uh, some other um, signs, for example, uh, caput. Uh, so usually you, you find a standard uh, two things behind uh, the this sign. So it is used in the its literal meaning head, and then uh, in the meaning uh, chief. So the head of a man. So or probably man person. Um, but then, so you find so the same sign, uh, so uh, in a different combination. In this, uh, uh, in this case, uh, in, the, in the ligature with the scalpel, uh, so to render uh, so the idea of um, of the verb uh, to scrape away, and uh, it's clear. So this is uh, in general. So uh, one, what would uh, proper, uh, properly define uh, the sign as a uh, as an ideogram, so which uh, alludes to the idea of a head. Um, there are, uh, so along with uh, the uh, logograms, which uh, hide only one or two single words, so there are uh, signs which uh, can stand with uh, many different uh, verbs or uh, words in general. Yeah? So one of the example is, for example, pes, uh, so which is uh, food, and it's, uh, it's clear so that there are many uh, different actions which, uh, which could uh, involve uh, so to say the idea of going so it could be running going passing uh, but also bringing uh, and and carrying so and in this sense uh, so one cannot uh, one uh, one wonders if it's really a ideogram or it's already a, a, what one would call a determinative uh, so the uh, uh, a classifier, so the in general, so the, the general sign, uh, which uh, refers to certain uh, semantic sphere in very uh, general terms. Another example is uh, so the um, belongs to the uh, to nouns. Uh, it's the um, sign for uh, oculus, uh, so for eye, and again, so you can uh, imagine that there are a lot of different things which involve uh, eyes. So it's uh, from very basic uh, mana to see. Uh, to more uh, so interesting cases like uh, only to know or answer to love uh, and then also to find uh, but also some notions associated with uh, with light uh, as for example the the uh, as I already mentioned so logograms and ideograms are uh, indeed a very uh, pervasive um, element of the uh, hieroglyphic uh, writing system so they uh, uh, they appear in every uh, with every uh, type of uh, word which which you can uh, basically imagine. So of course, more frequently it's with nouns and uh, adjectives and verbs. But curiously enough, also some pronounced uh, pronouns are uh, encoded by uh, one single sign. Well, this is the basically uh, the case only with ego, which is uh, well the uh, a protomy of uh, of a man pointing. His nose, or in general, his face, but that's all. Uh, that's indeed a case of uh, so the ideographic presentation of uh, an idea of a pronoun. Uh, the same is the case uh, universal with adverbs and postpositions, and also with some particles, as for example, a uh, negative particle. Then we have uh, determinatives or classifiers. Again, as I already told, so the distinction between uh, ideogram or classifier is a fuzzy one, basically. So the uh, the uh, the general classifiers are simply a sign which uh, very uh, shorthand uh, um, refer to uh, some semantic uh, sphere. So like uh, like a sort of uh, giving hinting on uh, so what what we are talking about. So the most uh, frequent ones uh, are the two uh, first two. Uh, so the uh, so the toponymic classifiers with uh, uh, for city and a country. And then you, uh, we have uh, a divine classifier, uh, which is indeed so one of the uh, uh, best known um, hieroglyphic Lugan uh, signs, uh, the sign for uh, for Deus, uh, for, for for a god. Which, which can uh, occur as with the uh, names of uh, uh, usual de deities, 
uh, as with some demon-like uh, creatures, as dark deities, for example, and with uh, further with some some notions which might, in a way, uh, involve the idea of uh, divinity, uh, as for example, east, which is connected with the, with the sun, uh, but also with white, which is associated with the, with the uh, gods. In then we have classifier for animals. Uh, well, um, so the, the uh, usual thing. So the, uh, actually one can do without easily, but for some reason one still preferred to, uh, so to make it once again uh, clear that a, a gazelle is an animal. Then we have a feminine classifier, uh, femina. Again, so this is the, uh, just the case uh, when the distinction between an ideogram and a, uh, uh, classifier is uh, it's quite a difficult one. Uh, so because uh, finally, uh, yeah, so the, uh, it depends on the, uh, on the point of view, how you, how you uh, would like to look at it. And then we have classifiers for materials. So the, uh, as far as the extent corpus allows to, to, to judge, so the, the most uh, frequent ones were for stone and for wood. Uh, and interestingly, so the yeah, so once again to, to uh, emphasize the this uh, fuzziness of the definitions, uh, so the uh, lignum, so the uh, it's clearly uh, simply so the sign simply represents a piece of food, and it is used uh, so with uh, different uh, things made of uh, made of wood. Uh, usually, at least, uh, but then, so one should note so that uh, not not always. Yeah, so it was uh, like an optional category. So because uh, so uh, evidently a seat, a usual seat, was made of wood, but uh, for some reason, uh, so it was not so important to indicate once again that it's made of wood. And uh, on the other hand, uh, so we have quite a peculiar. Um, like a further development of design, uh, so uh, one usually finds it with uh, with the things uh, connected so with authority as a mayor, uh, governor, and a vizier, and apparently uh, so the uh, so the story behind that is that the um, the case of uh, Septa uh, Salcha uh, was in a way uh, generalized, and so one uh, simply transferred so the idea of uh, wood. Of the, of, of the wooden scepter on the idea of authority. Then we have two other cases, which are strictly speaking not, um, not determinatives. Uh, probably originally they were, but yes, yeah, so the, in, the, uh, in uh, later hieroglyphic inscriptions, so they are uh, so, uh, such a tiny things uh, that uh, so one, one would hesitate to call them real uh, determinatives. So, the, so you can see, so the one, look, uh, one looks like a, a short oblique stroke and uh, is used for uh, just to indicate so that, uh, so that follows a personal name. And the other one is, uh, well, the uh, frampon. Uh, so the uh, two short strokes, uh, so to indicate, uh, so in the majority of cases, uh, something like uh, ideogram, so that uh, the sign will sh which will follow an ideogram, but its use uh, was uh, by far not, um, not very regular. And then, of course, we have phonetic signs, as you could already, uh, as you could already guess, uh, so looking at the transliteration. So the, uh, basically what we have uh, so in the uh, early Iron Age inscriptions is a syllabic uh, system, but to call it, uh, to call it as a, a regular syllabic system uh, is, uh, would be a little bit too far-fetched. So we do have like uh, normal uh, syllables, indeed, ma, mi, mu, na, ni, nu, uh, and so on. Uh, so you can uh, solve the uh, so this is the table which I took from the uh, corpus um, uh, by David Hawkins, so which uh, lists conveniently so the all the usual uh, signs uh, used for uh, writing uh, phonetic texts in Luvian. However, I think it's uh, so if one uh, just looks at this table, it could be a little bit misleading uh, because it does not show what what part uh, what what part of the uh, repertoire or what part of the uh, written surface on the stone it takes. Because finally, um, so one, uh, one does not find a text uh, so written exclusively with these signs. Always is something, uh, is something mixed in. Uh, that could be uh, so the um, 
either more unusual signs, but in any case, almost every text contains a lot of uh, ideograms and logograms. So uh, it's quite important to uh, always to keep in, in, in mind uh, that it, it's, it is a, a mixed system indeed. So like uh, logo syllabic would be a proper term of oh, yeah, So well, of course one could uh, so, um, also term it uh, logo idea syllabic and so on. And so, the, uh, so this is the, an example of, of rare signs which are rarer indeed, uh, so but almost in every uh, inscription one finds uh, something unusual. So the, uh, so it's not, uh, the hieroglyphic uh, Luvian is not something uh, for, uh, for, for somebody who looks for regularity. Okay, so you already uh, seen uh, the example from Karkamish, and uh, so just two further examples to, um, so once, uh, to, to once again uh, show you that, uh, Comparable citation uh, was present in many other inscriptions. So uh, again, logograms, ideograms uh, expanded so by the phonetic uh, signs. And of course, uh, so the, if you if you if you have something which uh, can be ascribed to uh, one of the given uh, semantic categories as uh, div uh, divine or toponyms, you find uh, invariably a logogram uh, or uh, so a, a classifier, but then uh, so it's uh, the uh, picture which I just represented uh, is found mainly in the uh, late text in the so to say classical period of the uh, late uh, uh, hieroglyphic Luvian um, uh, city states. In an earlier uh, time, uh, again, so it's in Karkamish and it's still what can be termed uh, early Iron Age, although it's probably so the end of the uh, second millennium uh, before crisis, uh, you find something uh, quite different. So uh, you can already see, so by the distribution of colors, uh, that uh, so the text is different. So the, uh, for example, in the, uh, in the last sentence, you find only one single phonetic signs out of, I don't know, 12 probably. And uh, so in other uh, cases, you can see so that basically all the um, important um, so like semantically uh, loaded elements are rendered by uh, logograms or ideograms and only uh, auxiliary elements are rendered by uh, phonetic signs. This is one of uh, the, this is the one uh, end of the scale. And on the other uh, end of the scale, uh, just at the very end probably of the uh, existence of um, Luvian, hieroglyphic Luvian uh, scribal culture, probably uh, not, uh, not much later than uh, 780. So one finds texts uh, written with much heavier usage of phonetic signs. Uh, so, as you can so, uh, see by comparing uh, so the uh, transliteration and uh, phonetic rendering, so basically we have a phonetically written text with only very few, so one, two, three, four, five, six uh, cases in which uh, something in, uh, encoded uh, not by a, phon uh, a phonetic sign, but a, a logogram. And uh, as you can see, so this is the very, basically very uh, standard uh, things, uh, as Rex is uh, indeed, so very easy to, uh, to, to, to write in this way instead of uh, writing so it would be five signs. Of course, it's the uh, principle of economy. Okay, this is the station um, as I um, saw the which I described. Um, this is the late, uh, late uh, I'm sorry, uh, the early Iron Age. So when one comes and uh, it's already um, fully fledged uh, and highly developed uh, writing system. But we know for sure that uh, hieroglyphic uh, Luvian uh, or hieroglyphic Anatolian uh, existed for uh, several centuries, uh, at least probably five, but probably even more. Uh, however, so unlike the, um, the station in the late Hittite states, uh, well, which is quite far from being uh, ideal, so because the, the, the area is quite huge, and the, uh, the actual distribution of the inscription is, is very meager. However, in the late Bronze Age, uh, it's even worse than that. So uh, you can see and uh, even count so the, the points which we have. But however, uh, so this, uh, the, this map, which I took from the very nice uh, 
internet page uh, so by uh, Typhoon Belgin uh, Hittite monuments. Uh, even though uh, not all these points represent an inscription. And uh, for example, so looking at the West, uh, which, uh, which is interesting case. Uh, and uh, so basically the uh, late uh, Luvian inscriptions are absent from the West at all. So one finds, uh, for example, Beikui, which is practically non-existent. Uh, so uh, the inscription was uh, copied there by uh, Ramsey in the 19th century, but then lost. Yare, uh, not inscription at all. Gavur Kale, uh, neither. Um, oh, sorry, sorry about the, uh, the bells. Um, and then, uh, so Eflatun Pinar, uh, not an inscription. Fasilar, not an inscription. Hatib is a small uh, relief. Uh, so the situation with uh, uh, so with the uh, with the, uh, early monuments is uh, is is not very inspiring, and uh, so the, this is probably in part uh, responsible for the uh, not uh, huge popularity of the Hadalif Lumen, uh, or not um, uh, not much knowledge about it. So basically, what we have uh, is only three long and relatively uh, well readable inscriptions. Inscriptions. Um, so the one of them is uh, Yalbord, so the which which is basically a basin. Uh, so probably indeed, so the, the basin organized uh, or um, so around a water spring. Uh, uh, but uh, strangely enough, uh, so it uh, features some uh, something like uh, annals uh, of the uh, of king uh, of a late king of Tuthalia the uh, third or fourth, uh, depending how you you number uh, him. Uh, so you can see the one of the examples, one of the blocks. Then we have Zudburg found in Hattusa. So the, it's quite well preserved, uh, as you can see. So basically, this is one of the uh, rare examples when we have all the, the entire inscription, basically without uh, without any any sign uh, being lost. And then we have uh, the so-called Emergazi uh, altars. So the uh, Two altars. Actually, there is a, a third inscription uh, found in Emergazi, which you uh, which you see in the in the background. So there is this, this call, uh, so-called Emergazi block, but the uh, altars are more important because uh, so they preserve much more text and uh, sort of can, um, uh, sort of uh, the text which makes some sense, unlike uh, Emergazi block, which uh, which preserves only a couple of sentences. So you you can see so the uh, as you as you can observe, so the uh, state of preservation of the of the stone is uh, by far not ideal, and which, which again gives uh, a lot of uh, difficulties. And then one should also mention uh, Nishantash, found also in Hattusa, but unlike uh, Zildburg, uh, it's an uh, open air inscription, and uh, so. Even on this photo, uh, it looks probably not much um, more different uh, from, uh, from, for example, in Ergazi altar. It's, uh, it's practically unreadable uh, by the naked eye. So in the um, last years, uh, so one tries to, uh, to apply the technology of uh, 3D scanning to it. Uh, so, and uh, Massimiliano Marazzi is involved uh, into it. And uh, it seems like, uh, so it can at least improve uh, so the visibility of some signs. Uh, well, uh, let's see if we'll be able to uh, indeed so to read something uh, sensible on it at the end. So uh, besides these uh, three or uh, so four inscriptions, so we have uh, quite a few, probably several dozens of monuments. Uh, but again, so the numbers are misleading. So because uh, most of them are either very uh, fragmentary or very short, as for example this. Uh, inscription, well, I don't know so how to call it, so it's not the real inscription and not the graffiti, uh, but it's simply an uh, epigraph, epigraphs to the uh, figures, to the, uh, the leaf representation of gods and kings. Then we have a uh, quite interesting and exciting example of Kyrutolu, uh, found not far away from Emergazi, but unfortunately it's again, so the, the block is first uh, damaged and second is probably uh, only one uh, block, uh, of a much longer inscription, so the, it's very difficult to make sense of it. Then we have some uh, stele, so one of the uh, few nice examples from Western uh, parts, uh, part of Anatolia. And then we have uh, some sort of graffiti, uh, again, so the, this is uh, true graffiti in this sense, 
In this case, uh, so and uh, so they again accompanying uh, accompany some uh, some reliefs. Well, basically, it's names, titles, and that's all. So the of course it is sort of inscription, sort of text, and uh, under uh, favorable circumstances, you can uh, make quite a lot of sense of it. But still, it's very far from giving much idea of the. Uh, of what, what happened, what exactly happened uh, with the script. And still, uh, the examples of uh, Emergazi altars and uh, Yalbord present a sufficient uh, material so to make some inferences uh, about the general development of, script, of, of the script. Uh, so between, uh, say, 15th uh, century uh, before Christus and the early Iron Age. And this is some, something uh, which one would, would uh, expect uh, uh, very readily. Uh, so because we have, uh, well, basically it's the continuation of the same line which we uh, saw, so the uh, comparing, so the late uh, text from Karkemish and the early example from Karkemish, uh, Karkemish uh, R4. Uh, so basically, so what we have more idea, uh, ideographic writings, uh, more logographic writings, uh, and uh, fewer uh, phonetic writings. Although one should uh, say that um, it, it is basically a already well-developed uh, system. So the, uh, again, so you can, uh, you can see that, uh, so basically with uh, ideograms are encoded uh, only uh, things which are, uh, which are quite obvious in the context and uh, in a way felt uh, uh, so the scribe felt it, it, it would be redundant so to, to write so the whole thing. So the, of course it's quite clear. So the, for example, the uh, first uh, clause is quite clear syntactically. And of course the Rex can be nothing uh, other than the subject of the clause. And of course it would be, uh, so it would take uh, uh, too, uh, too much effort. So to write Handa YT instead of just writing one sign, which already gives a pretty clear idea. Uh, of the syntax of the uh, of the clause, so the same we have uh, in in Yelbord. Uh, so, um, it is uh, indeed something like uh, a little bit less developed uh, phonetic writing of the uh, late monuments. Uh, so uh, whenever you can uh, write something without uh, indicating uh, case uh, cases or grammatical categories, it goes. Now, uh, because finally, so the, the first uh, sentence, the, the, the context uh, makes it entirely uh, clear that uh, so the, um, the subject of the clause is the Hittite king. So I, uh, so because the, the whole description is, is composed as a, as a narrative, uh, so about the uh, so adventures of the uh, Tuthale IV. Uh, and of course, yes, yeah, so it could be only to Piha, so I attacked uh, Finale, not Finale attacked me. Uh, so the, it's um, so again, so the simply the principle of. And then I should of course mention very important, but sometimes uh, quite a frustrating category of material, the ceilings and seals. So they are found, uh, they are found uh, much more frequently than uh, the uh, inscriptions. Uh, and uh, sometimes they, they are found also in uh, quite a good uh, state of preservation. Uh, but of course, uh, the, uh, the ceilings are very tricky material. Uh, so of course it's not sentences. Of course it, it, it is a sort of text uh, because the, uh, finally uh, anything uh, which is written with uh, uh, phonetic signs uh, is a text uh, even, even without uh, phonetic signs. But of course it's a very uh, specific type of text on the names, uh, Ekebanite with uh, titles and basically that's all. Uh, so it's very good uh, when you have uh, the whole corpus uh, of, uh, of, the, of such material as was the, uh, uh, has been the case with the, the uh, archive found in uh, Nishan Tempe, uh, in Vestbau in Hattusa. Uh, extraordinarily uh, interesting material indeed. Um, well, something like, uh, well, the uh, several thousands of, uh, uh, um, of pieces, uh, but the, uh, some of them, so, um, cover the same uh, the same um, uh, owner of the seal so we have something like uh, 600 uh, different uh, ceilings which is very uh, well basically quite representative material and uh, so in addition we have also some ceilings by uh, kings and queens 
and of course, uh, so the uh, the seals and uh, well, the ceilings as impressions on the, in the clay, uh, but also seals themselves are a very frequent uh, type of material. But unfortunately, in uh, many cases, is uh, found uh, simply uh, by chance. Uh, in some cases, uh, something pops up uh, in, in a museum or uh, even worse of that in the uh, black market, so without uh, any archaeological context. And uh, finally, so the uh, most of them are, well, uh, more or less damaged. Uh, and uh, so only in the cleanest cases, we can be sure so what is, what is written on, uh, on them. The, uh, the, earliest, the earliest ceilings uh, are much less readable than the late ones. So the, uh, so the Nishantepe archive uh, from Hattusa is important also in the, in the sense uh, that it gives, uh, so it mostly um, dated to the uh, late 13th and, uh, uh, no, to the uh, late 14th and uh, 13th century BC. Uh, which is uh, like the, the heyday of the Hittite Empire, and uh, already uh, the Luvian uh, was highly developed uh, system. So one finds uh, so many readable things, and uh, one can make good use of them. So what one finds on the earlier seals, which in part uh, date to the so-called uh, old Hittite, uh, Hittite uh, period, uh, so uh, that is the before. Uh, uh, 1400 BC, they are much more problematic. Uh, so the problem is one can read them if one uh, wants to do that. For example, so the first example, so one can see the, one can easily identify the sign for scribe, uh, so the, uh, the so-called favorable sign for, uh, so for life, um, so just uh, some fortunate sign, uh, so when, which one uh, sometimes call, uh, calls uh, anich. Um, and then, so one can identify the sign for the stag antler, which is a frequent thing in uh, later hieroglyphic writing uh, and uh, stands for, for Kuruntia. So this is indeed so probably uh, a man called uh, Kuruntia, which, which was a frequent name, a scribe called uh, Kuruntia. But well, this is the case when we uh, already know something and we can apply it and get the, uh, so to get the same result, uh, so which we already know. So the, the, the point is, so in, in other cases, we cannot uh, readily read something. For example, so the uh, uh, second or third uh, case is much more problematic. Uh, so uh, we cannot, we can propose, uh, make some proposals, but we cannot basically verify them. That's the problem. So we basically stuck with, uh, uh, so with, uh, with uh, nothing. Uh, so if one wants, one can propose an interpretation and be happy with that or be unhappy with that. So uh, to summarize, uh, so this is the, some first ex examples of early, uh, early uh, ceilings. Uh, sometimes, so this is the one of the, uh, yeah, so like, like uh, more tantalizing cases, this is something which looks indeed like uh, like a text. So the whole, uh, well, probably sentence or two or even three written uh, on a seal. Uh, and some of, of the signs can be uh, readily identified. Uh, some others are more problematic. But the, the first problem with this particular seal, which is uh, conventionally called uh, the Baltimore seal, is that it ha has been found, uh, so it uh, just popped up in the black market. So the, uh, so the, the only uh, indication on, on the provenience of the seal is the, uh, the uh, first seal in Aydin. Well, and uh, that uh, tells us uh, finally almost nothing about, uh, so its provenience, its dating. So the, uh, finally, so the piece uh, proves to be quite useless uh, for the question of the development uh, of, the, uh, of the script or even for drawing some historical conclusions. So that's the problem. And sometimes, yes, yeah, so I should mention before uh, going to this type of material uh, in some uh, more detail a little bit later, that there are something like graffiti uh, found uh, on the uh, vessels uh, in Kanesh. So this is uh, one of the, well, better cases in the sense that it's the uh, controlled archeological contents, uh, context uh, so one can date uh, so the majority of the of this type of material uh, with uh, good precision. The problem is, uh, however, that so the, these signs are again not quite readable. 
so one can uh, again so to propose uh, to read that sign in this way or in that way but it will give uh, not so many uh, points uh, for further interpretation for example yes of the sign the, the upper sign of the on the uh, left vessel can well be the early form of the uh, sign for deus uh, and then so the, this could be uh, well something like uh, so the vessel uh, belonging to the temple of a certain god or it could be not so the, the, the uh, so this is the this is the problem what one usually so the uh, the um, story uh, seems to have uh, well the uh, still preserve some sort of clarity uh, so at the um, at the beginning of the 14th century so before that uh, so it's uh, all fuzzy so the first uh, well readable uh, ceiling is found in uh, well it's the which is usually thought to be the first well readable uh, ceiling is uh, found in Mashat Hug in again so in uh, in this case, in a datable uh, level, uh, which dates to the early 14th century BC, and it's indeed so the uh, ceiling of the uh, of the early um, Hittite uh, king of the uh, the so-called New Kingdom, Tutkhalia. So apparently the first or second again. So the uh, so the enumeration is a little bit. Uh, uh, the numeration of the kings is a little bit uh, diff uh, difficult in, th in this case, but the uh, the most important thing is that we have the phonetically written um, name of the queen, which is uh, well can be read Satan to Hapa. Hapa is uh, certainly uh, Heba, uh, so the, this is a, a fearful name and uh, contains the name of the uh, of the goddess Heba. And so the uh, so this is the seal with which some relative certainty uh, begins, and uh, that was uh, so the the whole situation. So we have quite a couple of uh, uh, late inscriptions dated to the 13th century. And some, uh, well, some quite representative uh, material uh, uh, seal, uh, seal of seals and uh, ceilings, uh, starting at around uh, 1400 BC. And this was uh, the, um, so the, the situation uh, has been interpreted in the way that the early, that the true script or fully fledged uh, writing system has been sort of invented or developed uh, so around this time. Before that, before that, yeah, so it was like, uh, well, uh, meddling with uh, symbols, uh, with uh, pictures, uh, some representations and so on. So the, on the seals, uh, so you can, well, it's not, not a real script, uh, something which gives some meaning, of course, as many other things, but not a real script. And then, so the uh, it was not very uh, so the uh, um, the early beginnings uh, of the hieroglyphic uh, script was not uh, for a long time uh, has been uh, not uh, excited much interest. But then, so as it uh, frequently happens, uh, just uh, in the span of a couple of years, um, well, several uh, well, two important uh, um, contributions uh, appeared on the on the question of origin of the Anatolian uh, hieroglyphs, uh, so there by uh, Willem van Waal uh, and Elia uh, Jakubovic. So the, I mentioned also the, uh, the uh, early treatment um, of the, uh, uh, by Hawkins, uh, which predates all this uh, story by 25 years, uh, so on which uh, so both uh, uh, Waal and, uh, and me in, in my uh, so like small contribution to this uh, topic, uh, so like um, make some use of and then, so the uh, I, I will start so with uh, the representation uh, with the idea of uh, Ilya Yakubovich. Uh, so he made an interesting case uh, so for the development of the of the uh, hieroglyphic Logan script in Hattusa uh, in the um, very specific uh, social linguistic uh, circumstances in the. Um, in the so-called uh, mixed uh, Lugan Hittite milieu at around which, as he thinks, uh, existed in Hattusa uh, at around uh, 1400 uh, BC. So the, this indeed so indeed so like uh, the um, the book uh, makes a very good case uh, for the uh, large population uh, mixture and uh, um, ethno-linguistic mixture in the Hittite Empire. So the Hittite Empire was finally not not that Hittite as one could see. 
uh, and so many Luvians were present, uh, present in, uh, in this uh, bio kingdom, so probably even much more than Hittites, however one defines them. And so, so they were present also in the, in the capital and uh, constituted um, quite a significant part of, the, uh, of its population. Uh, so this is the general uh, idea of uh, Ilya Yakubovich, and, uh, but he also made some uh, very interesting observations on the uh, structure, uh, structure of the uh, syllabic uh, component of the script and uh, um, drawn attention to the, well, sort of by then, uh, sort of communist, uh, communist opinion uh, that uh, some science of the uh, script cannot be explained uh, by applying only Luvian, only Luvian uh, language. So through Luvian language, cannot be explained through Luvian language. Uh, so, there is, uh, so there are not many of them. So I will come a little bit later to, this, uh, to the, uh, these particular cases, but still some of them. And uh, so this is the indication when, uh, that uh, there is some problem with uh, Luvian script. So it is probably not as Luvian as we thought. Uh, on this reason, he preferred to call it uh, Anatolian hieroglyphs, which is well, a fa uh, fairly good term as well. So I well, don't mind to use it. And the, um, the uh, argument of, uh, so the, basically uh, the argument of uh, Ilya Yakubovich proceeded from the situation which I described. So the, uh, some very few monuments before uh, 1400 BC and then, so we have uh, something like a development. Uh, Willem van Waal uh, so took a different approach and uh, she, uh, well, uh, the, um, quite a complex approach uh, and she analyzed both the uh, data, the evidence of the, um, Assyrian um, tablets uh, from uh, Kanesh and uh, some um, other indications. He, uh, she also took into consideration the uh, existence of graffiti uh, and the ceilings. But of course, the, her main uh, argument was that uh, the so we have indications in the as in the Hittite text, in the later Hittite text, and already in the uh, Assyrian text of the writing on wood. And uh, so the term which uh, used Assyrians was itsurtum, something, uh, something like uh, incised into. And uh, in general, it uh, seems to suggest that we have uh, something like, um, well, the hidden uh, element uh, of the uh, written culture uh, so we, which we could, cannot detect archaeologically. So basically, uh, so what we have in the uh, uh, in the um, in graffiti and ceilings is only uh, not in not even the tip of the uh, iceberg, but yes, yeah, so some uh, some shine on the tip of the iceberg. So the uh, the iceberg itself uh, was basically text written on wood. And uh, she uh, she pleaded for um, for much early development uh, of the writing in Anatolia. So at around probably as early as the late uh, third millennium before Christus, but in any case uh, as early as uh, early uh, second millennium before Christus. And uh, as for uh, the uh, place of uh, place. Mm, Basically, so the, uh, she did not uh, took a specific stance on the on the place of uh, of um, origin of the of the writing, uh, but she proceeded uh, from the idea of um, of David Hawkins that uh, so basically the writing in Anatolia has been developed under the influence from the Aegean, and that's why probably in Western Anatolia or probably in uh, Cilicia, so which uh, touched upon the Aegean. So the, uh, in my article on the hieroglyphic uh, inscriptions of Western Anatolia, so, uh, so it was not my aim actually so to, to, uh, to present something uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the origin of the hieroglyphic uh, uh, Luvian in general, but I took the uh, opportunity so to explore uh, as, a, a, as a broken hypothesis that it's indeed uh, so has been developed in the West. And um, I did not see much influence uh, of the Aegean uh, writing system on the hieroglyphic uh, Luvian. For me, much more important role um, played a consideration that, um, so in central Anatolia or in southeastern Anatolia, what we have is basically uh, already existing uh, script, a cuneiform. 
And uh, for me then, uh, it was uh, so the um, good question, why to invent a writing uh, so in a region where uh, already a writing exists. It is not impossible to propose uh, an explanation for that. Uh, so it could be indeed a sort of uh, the uh, strife of uh, national or cultural uh, identity. So to, to emphasize uh, the, this uh, uh, aspect of, um, of culture, but still, so we know uh, basically nothing about that. And uh, uh, back then I thought that, uh, so to take the uh, the, the, um, the origin of the uh, hieroglyphic Luvian away from the uh, area where a script already exists would be a good possibility. And Western Anatolia, in which we do find uh, some, some sort of, uh, well, several inscriptions, not too much, uh, but still something, uh, would be a good, uh, a good case. And uh, as already uh, David Hawkins wrote, uh, so we do not have much material from Western Anatolia, but basically we have uh, uh, not too much uh, archaeological work done in uh, Western Anatolia. And I thought that, well, okay, uh, probably indeed, so we still uh, could not find uh, so the, this early material. Actually, I have to say that uh, since then I uh, rethought this idea and I, uh, I no longer believe that Western Anatolia is a good candidate for uh, the uh, uh, for the origin, for the uh, birth of the uh, regulated Lumen. So just to, um, to, to come back uh, to the um, sort of discussion uh, of uh, the idea of Ilya Yakubovich, he presented uh, so back then uh, six, uh, seven different uh, cases, um, and uh, three of which, so the last uh, three ones are very uh, flimsy. Foundation is actually, so they basically very, the, the terms which can be fairly described as Kultur uh, Vyota, uh, so, and uh, so probably uh, the word for uh, basket, swift, and gazelle was present as good in Hittite, as good in Luvian, or even uh, non in the European languages of the region. So, they, they, so they, they uh, could not serve as argument. I also discussed in that article so the case of me, uh, and in fact, uh, so this is also quite a uh, shaky case because the, the sign in the early inscriptions. Uh, in the uh, late Bronze Age inscriptions, and even in uh, so the, the traces of, of this practice uh, we can see also in the late inscriptions, this sign is not me, but ma i. So it could be uh, used in both uh, values and probably so represented a parallel to the wa vi, ra i, uh, la i, and, and so on. So basically, we uh, stay with uh, three different uh, cases, which are uh, quite. Uh, interesting and uh, in a way indeed problematic for the idea uh, that the, uh, the script uh, was uh, developed in the purely uh, Luvian milieu. However, and so the, uh, back then I proposed, well, it could be, so it was uh, quite a speculation uh, that uh, so we can uh, so probably uh, think on the specifically Western Anatolian linguistic milieu uh, for specifically this uh, three signs. Uh, but then, so the uh, so in the last years, uh, so I uh, I didn't work specifically on the uh, on the problem of origin of the of the script, uh, but still, so the uh, time and again, so you get something some uh, a new uh, find in the so basically from this region, from the same region, so which is the hub of the uh, hieroglyphic Luvian uh, culture in the late Bronze Age and uh, partly in the in the same region, so which covers the. Luvian uh, area uh, par excellence. So then and again, one finds a ceiling, a seal in this region, and still nothing in Western Anatolia. So just a couple of things which are uh, so indeed so very infrequent uh, finds. Um, and uh, so this is indeed very uh, strange in the sense, well, if we have uh, a hub of the uh, early Luvian, uh, Luvian culture in the West, why we have uh, no material still. And uh, one should say that uh, so the, the archaeological excavations uh, are quite, uh, quite present in, in the West, uh, so one works. And it would be conceivable that if there were uh, some early uh, inscriptions there, there, so we would find them. So this was one of the considerations. And a much more important thing 
which I did not, uh, um, so I discovered actually not in the uh, publication by Hawkins in uh, 2010, but only uh, in the discussion by Massimo Poeta a couple of years ago. So this is the, the graffito, graffito on a picture from Kultepe. And I think that just this uh, graffito um, really um, made me change, uh, change my mind about the, uh, the place uh, of origin of uh, hieroglyphic Luvian. It would, uh, it could uh, seem that it's probably uh, well as uh, unrepresentative as the uh, short inscriptions of the seals, but I think so. The case is different uh, uh, because it's indeed incised and incised in a very um, well, I would say, quite an elegant manner. Uh, it is clearly uh, so. If one looks at the uh, at the head of the animal, which is uh, easily identifiable, it's clearly not. Uh, Pictogram. So it's indeed, uh, it looks like a writing sign. So because one does not try to, to draw an animal head and donkey head, so one just renders a general silhouette uh, of, uh, of uh, a donkey's head. And uh, indeed, so in a quite uh, elegant way. Moreover, so the, we have also another sign. And this sign is uh, extremely problematic and actually not found in this uh, in the in the present form in any uh, any other late inscription, and this is also a very uh, good sign. So again, so it uh, it disproves the idea that it's sort of pictogram, and uh, so we have something uh, some uh, like a symbol. No, it's a it should be a, a written sign. Indeed, so the, this is a good question. Would be an ideogram or a phonetic sign, uh, but still, so the this the. Uh, Unpictographic character of this sign is a very important indication that uh, this is something uh, very specific and already quite uh, quite a, another state uh, stage of development uh, from picto uh, from pictograms. So the uh, so just very briefly. Uh, so what can it be? So the Massimo Poeta interpreted uh, so the uh, this is as a name uh, with which I completely agree. So the, this is. Uh, uh, type of thing which one would expect of the first of all to find uh, as a graffito on a picture. Uh, and indeed, so the uh, donkey names, uh, so the names based on the word for, uh, for, for, for donkey, Tarkasna, uh, very specific Netherland word, are very popular, uh, so they're very popular all throughout Anatolia, and so there are uh, many of them. Or, well, I would say in several of them. Uh, so it could be as pure name as Tarkasan or Tarkasna, as some suffix of the derivatives as Tarkasnali or Tarkasnawa. And um, so the uh, reading uh, of Poeta was uh, Asinusili, and uh, he tried actually to recognize in the second part, uh, so the, uh, the um, Hittite uh, word for Sali. Uh, actually, yes, the ring was, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the ring was uh, Sali, so Tarkasna uh, Sali, uh, and uh, he tried to interpret uh, Sali as a Hittite word for big. Um, well, I, um, I cannot agree with identification of the second sign as, um, as uh, Sa or Si, uh, so I think so the, the sign is different, so I, it's very difficult to propose a, a sensible alternative, uh, but if, uh, so the last part, which is actually legated sign, so the, which is indeed uh, very reminiscent of the animal head with the hoof. And one knows, uh, so the, this sign from the later uh, hieroglyphic repertoire. So if it's indeed Li, uh, then we have uh, a name beginning with Tarkasna and ending with Li, which could be probably only Tarkasna. And then, so the reading of the middle sign, so the core of the of the ligature is probably not that important. So I so the here is only some suggestions. And then so um, even even more recently, uh, another argument so bearing indirectly on the problem of the origin of phonetic uh, of the hieroglyphic uh, script uh, has been made by Alvin Kluckhorst, who discussed the phonetic value of the. Uh, of the sign, uh, so the which has been uh, ideographic value, capere, uh, so the so to take, uh, and has the phonetic value da. Uh, this is quite an interesting uh, case, and uh, as you as you remember, so it was one of the uh, so the first, the most important uh, case um, on which uh, Ilya Kobolich based his uh, so the idea of the mixed Hittite Luvian origin of the uh, of the script. So the uh, idea of Klukhorst was different. Uh, he um, 
he assumed uh, that the this value ta uh, or da uh, so to be uh, to be precise or well uh, it's i don't know so how it's it's more precise because the actual uh, phonetic value could be a v of uh, a sort of in any case uh, it is sort of a lenis uh, dental it's very difficult to say what it could be exactly, but in any case, it's sort of dental, uh, which developed from the combination of the old uh, protometal and dental and uh, uh, laryngeal, which gave in the uh, in the Hittite uh, something which is written in, the, in a very consecutive way with a, a da sign, uh, cuneiform sign. Uh, so it shot. So the idea was uh, the Kukhorst idea was that the um, phonetic uh, value da is acrophonically derived uh, not from the late realization of the uh, Luvian verb la to take but from uh, from its uh, phonetic predecessor uh, which is very difficult to uh, to say how uh, how it exactly uh, it sounded but it's probably still contained a sort of dental and so this and uh, so the again so it's very difficult to pinpoint in time uh, so when, when exactly it could happen so the only thing which can be uh, said, it's probably before the earliest attestation of the verb uh, to take in the form of la in the uh, uniform Luvian texts, which is probably earlier than uh, so, uh, 1600 BC. And then, so, uh, so from uh, three remaining problematic cases, so the infra, capra, and pes, we got only two. And again, so almost immediately, one can uh, wonder if one can apply so the same uh, type of reasoning also for another sign. So the ka, uh, so the which we have in uh, in Hittite we have kata, and Luwian we have uh, tsanda da. Uh, it's indeed quite a good case, uh, but one wonders if the the, the phonetic development from uh, from kata to sapta at tsanda. It's not uh, a later Luvian uh, development, and uh, in other words, uh, one can assume that at the time of the uh, development of this ecrophonic value of infra as ka, uh, the Luvian still uh, in Lu the Luvian, uh, so the, the speakers of Luvian still pronounce the word as kanta or and then so we have only basically one uh, one single uh, case the pes. But again, so this is the quite a weak uh, thing. So because the uh, the derivation of the value t is not the only uh, possibility from t a walk step, it could be something different. Finally, so the uh, so probably so applying the same considerations, one uh, can get uh, so the uh, get out of the Hittite the hypothesis uh, completely. Okay, then so. Um, uh, very briefly, as I am running out of time, so the um, about the idea of the Aegean influence of the uh, on the um, hieroglyphic Luvian, so the, as a trigger. Well, it's not impossible, but I do not uh, think it's really necessary. So, if one indeed uh, proceeds from the earliest material uh, represented by the ceilings uh, from basically Cappadocia and the, from the region around Kanesh and especially from the, uh, this uh, graffiti uh, on the picture, and uh, thinks that, uh, so the uh, script was invented uh, so quite early in the second millennium uh, before crisis in this region, uh, then so one uh, would wonder if uh, Aegean would be indeed a good uh, candidate for that. And Hawkins uh, and after him Wall so claimed that there is uh, some structural similarity, or uh, as, uh, as David Hawkins put it, a typological similarity between the Aegean scripts and the hieroglyphic Luvian. Well, I should frankly uh, state that I do not see not a bit of this uh, structural or ty typological similarity. So to speak about uh, typology, we should speak basically about the structure. <clears throat> Structure of the um, of the writing, not about the forms of the signs. Uh, the forms of the signs uh, tell us uh, basically nothing. And if you want, uh, so to speak, about the forms, I do not see uh, well many uh, similarities. It's all uh, generic stuff. So first you uh, you take uh, and represent some uh, an object, and then so you simplify its form. And so the the general uh, the development from uh, 
less uh, from more um, complex and uh, intricate uh, things to linear things uh, is a, a just a natural development of uh, any writing system. Take for example Chinese writing. And on the level of structure, uh, so we do not have uh, much similarities or actually no similarities at all, I would say. Uh, of course, we cannot compare directly so the uh, earliest Luvian uh, monuments with uh, earliest, uh, the earliest Aegean monuments. Uh, so because basically, so in our art of written hieroglyphic is not deciphered. So what we have, so we have some, of course, some quite good information on the uh, linear B which is quite a tricky case in the sense that, uh, so it was uh, a writing, uh, so actually um, recycled. So they are recycled by the speakers of the Greek language, recycled from early times. And so we cannot be sure from the beginning, so what, uh, what type of remodeling took place, uh, so in the transition before linear R and linear B. But so the general assumption would be that uh, so they do not change too much, at least so they kept the general trend uh, or the general lines, uh, the general structure of the script. So they, this is just the, an example uh, of how a usual uh, linear B uh, tablet look like. Of course, yes, yeah, so I didn't mention that the, of course, we have also the um, discrepancy in the uh, genre of representation. Of course, the linear B is basically administrative text, while hieroglyphic Luvian texts are uh, simple narratives. Uh, but in any case, so the, what we have is the syllabic, syllabically written uh, text uh, specifying the commodities, then so the name of commodity, and then some um, uh, some numbers uh, and so on and so on. In any case, so the, uh, this, uh, so to say, registers the syllabic, uh, syllabic writing, uh, the ideograms to uh, indicate the commodity and numbers are strictly kept, kept apart. So we do not have the mixed type of system. And so what, what we have in Luvian. Uh, so the uh, so these uh, categories of science uh, take different, uh, so to say, um, position on the tablet. Again, so just to, well, I'm not going, of course, to discuss the uh, linear A in no way, but so the general assumption is that the uh, linear A is still a syllabic writing. So the simply, well, simply syllabic, that could be wrong. Uh, well, but the, uh, so this is the just opinion of communists, and so I um, give references uh, by very recent uh, discussion by Thomas and uh, with all the white Davies. Uh, so they, they both proceed from the idea so that the, uh, the uh, sort of representative and the clearest part of the uh, linear A is uh, libation, libation formula is basically a celebrity written text, which is again so very different from what we expect um, for Lugan. And then, so the, uh, so the argument Argument of Hawkins, one of the arguments of Hawkins was that, yeah, so we have basically, well, comparable syllabaries. But again, so this is a little bit of a misconception because the syllabary uh, is a uh, quite a late uh, development in hieroglyphic Luvian. So this uh, sort of uh, standardization of uh, sign repertoire and uh, its restriction to, well, several dozens of uh, uh, most frequent and uh, easily uh, readable signs. In earlier texts, uh, and first of all, in um, the uh, archive, uh, um, the represented in the Nishantepe ceilings, we have a lot of different and a lot of variation. So we have not only different uh, complex uh, phonetic signs as Hana, Hala, Huru, Wiya, probably Teshu or Ascha, uh, attested even in uh, late inscriptions, Tuwa, Pari, Was, uh, but also sort of the very pronounced uh, tendency is to write uh, logographically uh, or uh, ideographically, if you prefer. So the, uh, this, the, the tendency to syllabify the script is a relatively late one. And in fact, again, uh, so the uh, uh, Hawkins uh, um, told uh, so that, uh, and so the uh, Billy Mine also um, pointed this out, that yes, this uh, not so much uh, Response between the hieroglyphic uh, Luvian and cuneiform, and uh, <clears throat> so my vision of that is exactly the opposite. I think uh, so they do look exactly the same. So this, from a structural point of view, this is the mixing, uh, uh, mixing of logographic or ideographic writing with uh, phonetic comp uh, components. And actually, uh, so if you if you look at this, so the, the 
I took this uh, passage from the annals of uh, Schaumanner's Sarah quite randomly, but so just to demonstrate the principle. So the, uh, you have, you write what you can uh, uh, write. Uh, so with ideograms using uh, determinatives, and then, so if it's not quite clear, so you uh, explain and expand this meaning by, by the use of uh, phonetic science. I think so the principle is uh, so just the same. And uh, in any case, uh, so the one should assume some sort of interference between this, uh, the hyperglyphic uh, writing and the cuneiform. So the, the, it would be a good question, what influenced what? Uh, but in any case, the, the uh, similarity or some proximity of these two writing systems is uh, much more perceptible than uh, theoretical similarity between the uh, Aegean scripts and um, at hieroglyphic organs. Uh, so very briefly, um, so the, um, I do think, so because yeah, finally I uh, wrote through the whole uh, dissertation on this inscription, so I cannot go so just without uh, mentioning. I think so we, we do have, uh, so uh, the rooted well textualized, so to say, between the late inscriptions of the Tutalia the Fourth and the early uh, graffiti represented uh, in Omission to the pottery. And I think so, this is called uh, Zutgong. Again, so the, um, the problem is uh, so, with which, so the name of the king uh, in this inscription is uh, very clear. It's Supervaliuma, but the problem is is the first one or the second one. And uh, at this point, I should make a disclaimer uh, I uh, could not uh, uh, reach the uh, two last uh, discussions of this by Clelia Mora and Mark Whedon. Uh, so the, I'm sorry about that. So I will uh, so just repeat very briefly some of the arguments which I used in, in my dissertation. And uh, so the, the major part of my argument was based on the structure and the forms of the, uh, of the script. And um, here, just to compare, uh, the, um, a part of uh, Yarbord inscription and a part of uh, Zygbog inscription in the uh, lower right column. And so the, uh, even visually, uh, you can see the uh, huge difference uh, between some of the, uh, the sign forms. Of course, it could be only style, but one should, uh, in any case, question why the uh, two inscriptions belonging uh, to allegedly the same time uh, are so differently written, uh, are so uh, differently uh, formed. And in fact, uh, the uh, difference between Yalbord and Imel Ghazi uh, is uh, basically non-existent, so they, they, uh, so they are written in the same script. And on the one, uh, on the other hand, uh, so the script uh, used in Zutburg is much closer to the earliest, uh, well, the un unequivocally uh, dated uh, inscription is uh, the Fyraktin, uh, uh, is dated to the early uh, 13th century Hattusili III. Okay, I skipped the, uh, this point, uh, so over briefly, yes, so the, uh, I think the, the, uh, one of the uh, curious thing uh, which connects the Zutburg and early inscription and early graffita is the usage of the uh, ligatures. And I think the, uh, this ligature, uh, in both cases, it's quite uh, difficult to say what is that, but I think in both cases we're dealing with the composite signs. Uh, in, the, in the case of Zutburg, it's even probably three signs. Uh, so to say, um, collided into one. But of course, the, the very uh, type of writing uh, of Zutburg uh, is the most, uh, the clearest uh, criterion, which uh, makes uh, me think that it's uh, an early inscription. And again, so the, uh, from this, uh, from colors, you can already see how heavily it uses the uh, ideographic or logographic writings. So basically, we, we do not have anything written uh, any uh, grammatical categories uh, written by, uh, by phonetics. So it's just uh, left without uh, anything, so just indicated. Uh, and uh, so the, uh, the reader is basically left uh, so with, uh, so on with the context to infer what is actually said about that. Yeah, so we, we have some, uh, basically we have names and, uh, and uh, the uh, secondary uh, grammatical uh, syntactical categories, uh, so like uh, quira, uh, when written with the phonetic uh, signs, which is, uh, would be uh, impossible to render differently, nan or nanumpa. Uh, so in, uh, so now, uh, 
And I think so the, uh, the general idea of Zutberg is to write everything uh, in logograms or ideograms until it uh, becomes impossible in the case of names and so on. So it's basically a logographic writing. And again, so to just to uh, uh, refer back to the, uh, this argument about the, uh, the uh, Aegean connection, this is hugely different. So what one would uh, have uh, in the Aegean uh, in this uh, uh, in this time, so we we, we will have much more uh, phonetic. So I come to conclusions. Uh, so the uh, so I would uh, reconstruct uh, so the uh, development of the uh, hieroglyphic uh, writing in Anatolia in the following way. So this is the because you can add to that also development in the early Iron Age. Uh, so basically, I agree so with Willem uh, Van uh, so that the uh, the writing was already, well, protoscript, uh, so would be probably a better term for that, have been developed already very early, probably in the still in the second millennium uh, before Christ, then the third. And it was developed in the, indeed, in the uh, southeast part of Anatolia, which uh, gives us uh, the majority of the Hobolithic Luvian monuments, both in the early period and in late period. So basically, it's Cappadocia, or probably a part of uh, Cilicia. Then, so after, so the, the, uh, there was probably a sort of uh, early initial development, uh, so in the in context of the uh, uh, trade with Assyria, which then so uh, came to nothing with the expansion of Hittites. And uh, so the script, so we do not know what exactly happened then. But yes, yeah, so the uh, script took a sort of uh, shadowy existence in the same general region, so, the, uh, so we can, can only speculate so in which form it existed. It could be used in administration, in the local administration, it could be used indeed, so still uh, written on the wooden tablets, but probably uh, so it, uh, it, it was uh, in part uh, lost, uh, and so they preserved only in a couple of, of places as a, uh, well, as a, well, the uh, sign of the past. But then, around 400, uh, 1400 BC, uh, so the script has been adopted by the Hittite state. And I would connect it, so, well, it's, uh, of course, uh, nothing more than a guess. I would connect, uh, so, this adoption of the uh, script by the Hittite state, uh, so, with the general uh, phenomenon of the southern, southeastern Anatolian influences uh, seen in the in Hattusa. So one, uh, well, it's first of all it's um, connected so with the, with expansion expansion of the Hittites in the uh, the well uh, basically the conquest of Kitsuwatna uh, and uh, expansion of the Hittites into the Syria. Uh, so the and so with that, so they came to into contact. It's much more intensive contact. So with the um, mixed uh, Carian Luvian culture and uh, so inter alia, so that uh, resulted in the so adoption of many Carian uh, deities in the uh, state pantheon. Also, by quite uh, in the uh, quite interesting phenomenon of double names of the Hittite kings. So uh, most of them had also Hurrian names, and so which is probably an indication that they have Hurrian background. Um, and also, yes, yeah, so we uh, as the as um, it is indicated by the name of the queen of uh, Tutkhala the, the first. So they almost exclusively all Hittite queens had a had Korean names, so they did intermarriage, so they just did an, uh, well, quite a regular practice of intermarriage between the Hittite kings and uh, so the probably elite of the, uh, well, uh, Kitsuwatna, or uh, in any case of the, uh, the states connected so with the southeastern Anatolia. Okay, and then, so that after, uh, so the, um, adoption of the script into, into uh, the um, scriptoria of the Hittite state. So it, uh, it got so the final impetus to be fully developed into a full-fledged uh, writing system. So which then so led to uh, the uh, thriving culture of the late Lugan state. Thank you so much for your attention. Rastislav, thank you so much. It was a really thorough and very intriguing overview that certainly clarifies a lot of issues that have been on the table for years. Uh, before leaving the questions to the floor, I would like to ask two questions, if you don't mind my 
sort of barging into the conversation straight away because I was quite puzzled by your last slide, to be honest with you. There seems to be an inherent difficulty or an uneasiness in assuming that writing is invented and we need to find templates. I'm, I'm with you on the Aegean template being, having been suggested as a result of sort of, you know, typological connections that are quite not there when we look at the evidence and even the chronology doesn't quite add up unless we really, really push it back as you seem to want to suggest that we should be doing back to, you know, the, the middle minimum period. Uh, the 19th century BC, which is very daring in itself. But I mean, to propose the Aegean as a template or as a source of inspiration for the Anatolian hieroglyphs is quite far-fetched in my view. So, I mean, that is my own personal opinion, but there seems to be this sort of, you know, reticence in wanting to jump in and say, well, Anatolian hieroglyphic is invented. We don't need to really call into any external influence to explain it as it is. It could have borrowed, I think, you know, I read two fantastic articles, one by Miguel Valerio, I'm preaching to the choir here because he's in my, in my <laughs> research team, but he's written a fantastic article for Studi Michene and a Geonatology two years ago, I think it's um, 2018. And also Ilya Yakubovich art, uh, article uh, from um, 2008, 20 years, uh, yeah, to 2008 on the origins, then I, I think they sort of converge in that direction, in, in stating, I don't, I don't want to misquote anyone, but in, in being quite, quite adamant that we really don't need to look for precise templates to explain the existence of Anatolian hieroglyphs. And the other question was to do with the chronology, and I hadn't read Poeta's article on the graffiti on the picture, and I wanted to know much more about it, because of course we don't have a bulk of evidence for stating that the origins go that far back, obviously, given the scantiness, given the depth of evidence that, that we have, but very, very interesting to be discussing origins again, and I want to just fire at you the possibility of an invented script being there. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Yes, very, uh, <clears throat> very important one indeed. So, but yes, yeah, so I'll be, I, uh, I should explain, yes, yeah, so the, uh, the usage of the uh, verb uh, triggered was not uh, by chance, yes, yeah, so indeed, so I don't think that we know, so I completely agree, so I think the, the, the invention of the script is much, um, well, um, and easier on the one hand and much more uh, funny thing that we can uh, think and so we do not need so actually so to have some examples it's it should be a trigger so what i uh, what i thought yes yeah, so they should actually know that yes yeah, so like several hundred uh, kilometers in the southeastern direction there uh, exists uh, exists something uh, well something nice uh, well the, as a as cuneiform writing uh, and i think so the uh, this knowledge the general knowledge of the of the of this idea Idea of the script was enough to engender the idea. Okay, let's mm. let's take our own uh, well, however you call it, symbols uh, or pictograms and develop something similar. I think so. Uh, this is the idea. So I do not think that yeah. So I um, so I pointed out so that there are some general similarities, but yeah. So they could not. Uh, in any case, the general similarities in the layout of the text of the of the principles used yeah so like first the so to say the uh, the core of the meaning is uh, rendered by ideograms or logograms and then so expanded by uh, by phonetics um but this is a very basic idea uh, so and uh, so we do not uh, need to take it so too uh, too much uh, too much further so i think well the uh, the general insp inspiration was enough uh, so to for script to be invented so i yeah, so I, I would agree so i i would not uh, look for uh, for uh, so so to say templates uh, in mm -hmm. any case, so, but the uh, so the some uh, rumors of uh, of um, of a script uh, so probably reached them and this was enough yeah and i think so of course uh, nothing can be excluded for this if if we uh, expand uh, so the area of the of the buff of the script a little bit to the south and came to Cilicia, which is finally not excluded. Mm -hmm. so finally, we can find uh, well, will will depend on the uh, on the archaeological um, well funds in, in 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 any case. And if we think that is uh, also taken into consideration of the possibility of Cilician origin of the script. 
for them everything is possible. Yeah, so it could be as uh, as GM, as Egypt, as uh, Mesopotamia. So because it's really a crossroad, uh, and uh, in this sense, I would say that the trigger could uh, came from from any direction at all, um, or none. <laughs> I mean, you could argue that it came from no direction at all in terms of its formative graphic repertoire. You know, when it comes to phonetic signs, it's a different thing. And I think it's Hittite must have played a part. But when it comes to the actual shapes of the signs, I mean, yeah. And, and even the functionality, when you see the beginnings of this writing system on seals, it kind of works in a way that you would expect an, a newly invented system of writing with a trigger, whatever that is, whatever you want to define as trigger, but it, it, it functions in, in its very own path of development, very, very internal to, the, to its own sort of devices rather than a sheer external influence that's bearing on it, if you see what I mean. Anyway, enough of me. Um, I think there's a raised hand by Vera Sukanova. Uh, if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you very much. This is actually Ilya Yakubovich. Oh, Chicago, okay, uh, sorry. Is, Hello. Uh, my wife uh, who kindly uh, put uh, her cell phone at my disposal <laughs> since my uh, internet connection is too low for properly uh, rejoining the discussion. Welcome, welcome. It's lovely to see uh, you. Thank, uh, to thank see. you. Uh, thank you uh, very much for uh, organizing this event. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Rostislav, uh, for presenting uh, uh, this uh, overview. Uh, I guess uh, I would like uh, to uh, react uh, to one of uh, the strange thoughts that was uh, present uh, in this lecture, namely the claim, uh, the many pronged claim that uh, the development uh, of uh, the phonetic <laughs> system underlying the Anatolian hieroglyphs somehow predates the late 15th, uh, early uh, 14th uh, century. And uh, indeed, uh, there were a number of uh, publications advancing that claim in uh, the recent uh, two or three uh, years. Uh, one of them uh, is uh, uh, the paper by Alvin that uh, you uh, have uh, mentioned. And all of them, to some extent, harken back to the paper by uh, Guillemin Val in 2012, according to which some form of writing distinct from the cuneiform already existed in Anatolia in the um, colony period, uh, in the period of uh, uh, the Karum uh, settlements. And um, I think that uh, it is important to distinguish between uh, two notions, the semiotic system distinct from cuneiform system and uh, the phonetic uh, system uh, having uh, uh, syllabic signs of uh, its own. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, I'm not uh, really a specialist, for example, in the Hebrew script of the Incas uh, in Peru, but uh, usually people assume that they were able to convey quite uh, complex uh, uh, messages uh, with uh, the help of their uh, semiotic system, and yet, it was uh, not uh, a phonetic writing. So even if we assume for the sake of the argument that uh, such system involving proto-hieroglyphs existed uh, either in the 20th century BCE or in the 17th century BCE or in the 16th century BCE, this does not automatically entail that this was a phonetic system. And yet, uh, the argument uh, by uh, Alvin, as uh, I uh, understand it, as well as uh, your argument today, is uh, predicated upon the notion that it was uh, a phonetic system. And um, uh, in the case uh, of uh, your today's lecture, it seems that your key reference here 
is uh, the paper uh, by uh, Massimo in which uh, he addresses these uh, three character graffiti beginning with the azimuth side. So I suppose that this is the key question, whether this particular graffiti proves the existence of a phonetic script uh, back, uh, well, in uh, uh, the old Assyrian period. I think that the way uh, to argue that something is a phonetic script, kind of the minimal condition to argue that something is a phonetic script, is the existence of two phonetic signs in a row, out of which one can uh, um, produce uh, a sensible combination. Because if we have just one sign, be it Li or something else, I mean, we would probably agree that this is not the canonical Li at the end. It requires some imagination to make a Li out of it. But let us to say it is the ancestor of Li. We never know whether it is the phonetic sign Li or it is the logographic sign that somehow predates the Li. In order to make a claim about the phoneticity, it is important to have two signs in a row. And uh, the way I uh, understand uh, your reading of uh, the artifact published by Massimo, we have one logographic sign, we have one sign which we do not know what it is, and then we have yet another sign which is the ancestor of Lee. Uh, to my opinion, this is a bit insufficient to prove the existence of a phonetic script at that place and at that time. And I would be interested in your reactions. Uh, thanks, Ilya. <clears throat> well, yeah, no, this, uh, <clears throat> in, um, in a way, it's pretty obvious what you are uh, well, what you are saying. Uh, of course, the, the evidence is extremely slim, so we cannot really make a fundament of it. So my, uh, so the, um, the importance of the graffiti for me is uh, so as I uh, as I mentioned so in, in the two respects, this indeed looks like uh, the uh, scribe who uh, scratched uh, this graffiti was quite uh, uh, accustomed to write in a in a good way. So it's not just something scratched by uh, by a child or so by some somebody who wanted so just uh, just to. Well, to to have fun with that. Uh, so no, uh, it looks like indeed. Uh, so the, uh, it's a trained uh, hand. On the one hand, so this is the graphical um, side. The uh, the other uh, side is the that again. So the thing which we expect to uh, pop up on a, uh, as a graffiti on a vessel would be a name. So because the typologically and so to say cross culturally, the personal names uh, on uh, pottery is the, 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 by far the, uh, the most frequent uh, category of, uh, of things. And this idea uh, squares very well so with, the, with the reading of the name uh, as uh, so containing so the uh, element, uh, so as based on the, on the root logogram uh, of on Tarkasna. And uh, so the, the basic idea, so that the name so it's already a sort of, uh, well, this is already a, a reverse writing. So because he's writing not about uh, a donkey, he's writing about his name. Yes, yeah? so like, and this is already the principle which is well known in the uh, later hieroglyph writing. Of course, uh, so the one can doubt, so the reading of the, of the last part, but still, so the, this is so strange and uh, so unpictographic. Uh, so to repeat uh, so what I've already said, that yes, yeah, so I think this is already something invented specifically uh, so to convey uh, phonetic meaning. And of course, yes, yeah, so just to, to come back to the, uh, so your general point about so this distinction of these two things, yes, yeah, so I completely agree. But I think in so the, uh, so to say the chronological difference between these two phases, so the existence of some semiotic systems, uh, system, um, well, the, uh, Rendering meaning by uh, by pictograms, uh, if you if you prefer, and the phonetization of the script. I think in the case of in the context of uh, so which I would uh, so following uh, Billy Mine uh, uh, suppose uh, is um, so the trade connections, the trade uh, the trade accounts, the 
uh, sort of administration. And this is the thing which in heavily involved, involves the writing of names. And I think so they already on the very early, uh, the, uh, so to say, the second generation of the, so to say, invention, which is, of course, the very conventional uh, uh, time, uh, on, the, on the second generation of this, like, uh, uh, 20 or 30 years after that, we can expect the phonetization of the of this system. So I do not uh, think so that this distinction would uh, would uh, give us uh, so much uh, uh, much much difference. So this this would uh, would be my answer to your doubts. Okay, I think Miguel wants to ask a question, right? Yes, if I may. Thank you. Of Sylvia. course, of course. Um. Um. You may already guess that I, of course, agree with, with the, the basic points raised by Sylvia and Ilya. I hope you can hear me well. Um, but I, I do think there is an important difference because it's, it's when the system becomes also phonetic notation and fully fledged that you actually see the structural typological commonality with cuneiform, which you pointed out. So that structure where you have uh, ideograms, if you want to call them like that, so semantic determinatives, logograms, and phonetic signs functioning combinedly in a system, that seems to emerge after the beginning of the, of the 14th century uh, before our era. Conversely, before that, as far as the archaeological record goes, what you see is a, a, a semiotic system, as Ilya called it, or a, a semiographic system, as I might call it, uh, with signs that are what... Um, from what we can gather, uh, emblems of divinities, um, signs standing for social political titles like Rex and Scriba, and auspicious symbols like Bonus and Vita. And they are working not like uh, cuneiform in that sense. So even if we want to pose it a trigger, that trigger doesn't show at that earliest stage. No. So Th this is why I see a, a problem with, with that specific model, and I wonder if it is necessary until we have other kinds of evidence coming out from the archaeological record. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so uh, just, uh, well, to, to, um, to explain it one, once again, so, the, uh, so I, um, so probably, yeah, so in my representation, it, it looked a little bit uh, mixed, but the, uh, I... Um, so I meant so actually two different things. So the, on the last side, so the trigger is it was a general, a general idea of a writing existing somewhere. Yeah. So and uh, so the, this was uh, un, so the uh, argument uh, completely unrelated to the argument so on the um, possible mutual influence of the hieroglyphic and the cuneiform. Yeah. This is only a general idea. So the rumor that yeah, so they they write and so let's. Let's do the same. So, but uh, so with our uh, with uh, with our own means. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's true. Yeah, and uh, well, but once again, so of course, yeah, it would be very nice so to found uh, in need so the same name read a little bit so uh, in in the same but not quite exactly the same way. And uh, so this would actually so make the case uh, much uh, much much more waterproof. Yeah. So until then. Unfortunately, no. Yes. Yeah, so, and uh, and of course, yes. Yeah, so the finally, unfortunately, we are we are we are facing the sort of uh, well, the uh, so if you believe in the wooden tablets or flying teapot, uh, or you don't believe in them, yeah. So I, I think I do. Yeah. So in general, so the I think yes. Yeah, so I uh, probably it's uh, worth mentioning. So this would be like a more general, um, so like uh, attitude to the the material. Yeah. So I think so. We we should always uh, keep in mind so the so what what part uh, uh, of, the, of the material culture we do have indeed in, in the hand. And I think so we do, we, we have lost uh, uh, many things. Yes, yeah, so, and uh, sometimes so like, uh, so being uh, well, heavily heavy influenced by the, uh, so to say classical archeology, span by the classical archeology span in all senses, the, the archeology span of the, the classical sites when one finds inscriptions and this is uh, a perfect thing, and so then one finds a uh, uh, pottery and so on, and one can reconstruct it also from the text, combining all the evidence. Um, I think it 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 could be a very uh, different in the in, in in different different times. Yes, and I think yes, of uh, just change one thing, uh, so like the writing material, uh, and then so you you will probably get a, a completely different picture of a society. Well, and uh, well, I think uh, so. The uh, the idea of writing on wood is uh, so I I would I would 
accepted so quite um, quite readily. So this. Okay, there's a question um, you. by Simon Zolt. If you want to unmute yourself. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Rastisa, for this very in interesting lecture. I would have a specific question about the date. In order to separate the origins of the Luvian writing system from the Hittite Luvian bilingual, bilingualism, you have to explain away the acrophonic signs with underlining Hittite words, as you did. And there you suggested something very interesting, that the problematic sign infra, ka, in fact, was created when the sound change from k to palatal k to z did not happen yet. However, and this is the question, we have syllabic signs with, with Z, so like the Tsa Tsi sign. And it has already been suggested, I think it was Iya, that the Tsa Tsi sign specifically, which uh, is an acrophonic sign from the word, from the pronoun this, uh, Tsa Tsi. And also the double vocalism fits very well. If this is correct, it would mean that when the Lubian writing system was created, this sound law was already passed, it already happened. And then you still are in the uncomfortable situation that you still have Hittite words as acrophonic uh, sources. Um, yes, uh, uh, thanks for the question. <clears throat> well, it, uh, it, it would de depend how we uh, reconstruct so the, the initial sound in, uh, uh, in, the, so in this uh, pre-verb. Uh, so it's, if it was indeed, um, so the question would be if it was indeed a, a palatal uh, car. So probably, uh, probably yes, uh, and then so. But uh, this this is probably not the only possibility, and uh, um, so the uh, so it would depend on the on the exact construction of these two verbs. But you're right. That's uh, that's might be uh, that could be a problem. Uh, and of course, yes. Yeah, so the the different possibility would be um, so the again. So we, we have also uh, dialects. Yeah. So and uh, so we we do not know exactly what happened. Uh, in the uh, in the southeastern dialect uh, of Luvian at that time, so it could be uh, so a little bit different. Uh, so, but yeah, thanks. Uh, so, in in general, so if one would like, I, so I'm. It's not my intention actually to, to develop this uh, idea just now. Yeah. So, but yeah. So if uh, so, you're right. It it may, it may clash with uh, with a different uh, reconstruction. But yeah. So I actually in, in one of the slides I mentioned. So the I I don't think that uh, yeah. So the um, yeah, so there is a like. Um, so that the sign ta uh, represents uh, um, uh, so the uh, so to say the a point uh, uh, because uh, well the I um, uh, because finally it doesn't look like that so it looks only on the on the later monuments it's finally it's uh, uh, it looks like that so it it is not a point uh, and so I don't think uh, so it was uh, present in. Uh, uh, so in the Luvian minds, so the idea of, uh, of pointing, so as we do, so in the in the traffic signs. Uh, so I, I think it's still still different origin, and then it uh, would be probably unnecessary so to argue, uh, so to, to make this case for uh, for Tsanga, Kapta, and so on. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? I don't see any raised hands. Please, anyone? I'll ask a question. I'm going back to the picture, Rastislav, if you don't mind. Which is not having read the article by Massimo Poeto, I'm I'm kind of in the dark here. It seems to have been dated with such a precision, you know, 1830 BC. How is that possible? I mean, what is what are the circumstances around the dating? Uh, well, if you uh, well, no, no, actually, so the the dating is uh, is broad. It's between uh, as far as I remember, so 18 BC and uh, 1630. So the, this is still uh, still quite a quite a time range. Uh, so if you don't uh, okay, so it's on typological accounts. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's more about uh, archaeological level. Um, so as I told, well, the uh, so to be honest, yes. Yeah, so I was. Uh, uh, so the initial publication, so it was actually some published not by uh, uh, by Massimo, uh, but it it was published by uh, by Hawkins, uh, and so I uh, so the, in the 2010, uh, and I still um, I well for for many reasons I, I didn't come to the original publication, so I didn't okay. do the dating, but yes, yeah, so the so uh, this is the dating, so no, oh yeah, so I I uh, so mixed up a little bit the day, so it's uh, 1830 uh, 17 BC, so the yeah, and it's it's. Well, this is the well, the, the just normal uh, dating for for for, uh, for Kuntu Bekanish. Uh, so the so the well, one one of the levels I think. Uh, well, and I okay. will not pretend that I I remember the uh, the exact chronology of the uh, of the levels of Kuntu Bekanish. 
Uh, but yeah, so it's simply dated. So according to the level uh, to the level in which it, it was uh, found. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do we have any more questions? No more questions. Well, it is quite late actually. It's been two lovely hours, Rostislav. It was wonderful to have you. I'm very happy that debate is still alive on the origins of um, of the Anatolian hieroglyph. Uh, I saw the Wilhelmine Valley is here with us as well, and Mark Whedon. Welcome everybody. It was lovely to see you all, and thank you so much for so much for having kept us company for two hours. Rostislav, it was great. Um, We'll be in touch. We will be editing this video and post it uh, on our social media and, of course, on our YouTube channel, our Inscribe website, so you can rewatch it. And if you have questions for Rostislav, I'm sure that he will be happy to answer them on email. Thank you so much. We'll see you in two weeks. We have the linear A fraction signs in two weeks' time and a way to, and a way to possibly crack them with the Inscribe team. Thank you so much. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you, Rostislav. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.